Hello guys, this is Rupesh and I'm watching CPP Nerd video series on STL and today's topic is STD DQ and this is called double ended Q. Don't get confused with this Q with what that STD Q is. So this is DQ not STD Q okay. So that stack and Q so this is not that Q okay. This Q is little different than not little different it's totally different than this double ended Q. If you want to compare this with some data structure compare it with vector and why we will see that so we'll go so we'll go to these notes line by line and i'll try to cover all the important aspects of dq so be with me till the end and have fun so the first point is std dq is an indexed sequence container so we have vector also which is a index sequence container because we have let's suppose vec and we do this right zero or one or two so this is an indexed base sequence container and the reason is vector inside have an array so you know that std vector is a class and inside that it maintains an array so whatever you pass it here it actually get it from that array and return you so the time complexity is one for vector and that is indexed container dq is also indexed container but wait a minute this is little different. We'll come to that. So the second point is it allows fast insertion at the both and both end like beginning and the end. You remember vector was only having push back and it was not having push front. But actually this double ended queue will have push front also and it will have pop front whereas vector don't have anything like that. Vector will always allow insertion and popping out from the rear end not the front. But if we'll talk about DQ, it will allow this operation here also. Okay, you can do from both the ends. So this is one of the difference. We'll see how it actually does that. Okay, it will come in between. Now third point is, I mean, the second point is, unlike vector elements of DQ are not stored contiguous. This is very important. Now let's try to understand the heart of this DQ. So concentrate well. So as I talked about this vector, and the property of the vector I said inside that it will have one big array. Okay, let's suppose this is how your array is looking like inside vector, std vector. Okay, we are talking about std vector. In DQ, the point is we will not have only single array, we will have multiple arrays and they will be actually linked to each another. And what is going to be the size of this array is fixed. We will see that size. I have noted down that point also. But the current point is vector will have elements stored in sequence. But here we have several arrays. So in case of vector, let's suppose V, if I will ask 2, then it will take this 2 and see into this vector and this is 0th position, 1st position and 2nd position and this will return this data to me. It is that straightforward, okay, for a vector. But let's come to this DQ. It is DQ. Let's suppose this is having only 4 elements. So all the vectors will have 4 elements in it. Let's just assume it, okay. And let's suppose you want 6th element. So let's suppose you are doing dq of 6 then it will actually know that okay one array is having only four elements so how much extra element i have so it's just that it has to divide this 6 into 4 and 2 so this much it will skip and it will get the second element from this array okay so this one is skipped because we know that it will have four elements and it will take this element because this is going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So 6 means actually it is totally 7 because our indexing starts from 0 to 6. So this is totally 7. So forget about this one. So 7 if you want to break into 4 and then it will be 3. So this is going to be 1, 2 and 3. So this is what we are looking for. So this is what it is doing internally to actually get your element. But in vector, I told you, it is just one dereferencing, but in this case, it is two time dereferencing. 
first you will dereference the particular array which is this one this one and this one or this one then you will dereference the actual element so anyway even that is also order of one because two time dereferencing is not that bad if you really need a dq data structure because in in case you have to insert in the beginning and the end if that is what you need then you have to go for the dq so let's move to another point this point says it uses individual allocated fixed size array that's what i said here with additional bookkeeping meaning index based access to dq must perform two pointer dereferencing that's what i explained here but in vector we get it in one dereferencing correct we all know that now let's move to this point the storage of a dq is automatically expanded and contracted as needed obviously let's suppose we have uh, all the elements 1 2 3 and 4 and 5 6 or 7 and let's suppose i started popping out from the front so this is gone this is gone this is gone and this is gone then it will know that okay this array is actually empty now what will happen we will end up deleting this array and we will start pointing this array so can you see this we are shrinking now so this is what this point is now Fifth point is expansion of DQ is cheaper than expansion of vector. This is really very important. Again, listen to me carefully. So the point about vector is, let's suppose initially when you create a vector, it will have very small size. Okay. And you keep on pushing the data. And once it will see that, okay, now I don't have any space to push another element. What it does, it creates a double size than what it has currently so if it is 4 then now it will be 8 and what it does it copies these elements one by one so this copy is very costly process and it takes so much of time that's why i'm saying that expansion of dq is cheaper than expansion of vector so this is what the expansion is we are expanding our vector so to expand that let's suppose now we have only 4 but let's suppose it is 400 or 4000 or maybe 40,000 then you will have to copy all that 40,000 into newly created array which will be having 80,000 capacity because it will get double and this capacity was 40,000 so can you see this you end up calling copying 40,000 and this is a waste but in this case you don't have to copy all these things what you have to do is you have to just append extra array that's it and you will then link it one after another and if you need more you will go for another array and then another array and another array so you are not copying anything you are creating new array because now we have chunk of the arrays so we have this facility here but to maintain this chunk of array we have to do little bit of extra than this vector and it is obvious right and this is really very important point about this so let's move to this uh, sixth point dq holding just one element has to allocate its full internal array and the size is example 8 times the object size on 64 bit lib std c++ or 16 times the object size or this much byte whichever is larger so if you did not understand this point this point is very simple it is saying that when you are creating a vector let me erase all these things okay this is saying that when you create a vector initially its internal array size is 0 then it becomes 1 2 4 8 something like this because you keep on pushing the data but in case of dq you have to have at least some amount of array i mean that array size should be of some length but not 0 or 1 because this is what the standard size is because we have to maintain several arrays right so the size should be equal so they have decided some size here so even if you have one element you have to have at least one this much big array but in case of vector it won't be that case so if you have very few elements creating vector would give more advantage than dq but then i would say that where you even going for vector you go ahead and use directly array correct okay so now let's come to this time complexity random access inside dq is order of one that's what i explained it has to dereference two time one time the array and another time the element in the array now another point insertion or removal of elements at the end or beginning is constant this is the important point see let's suppose this is your front here 
and this is your back of your DQ. And let's suppose this is actually filled. Every element of this array is having data. Now, if you are inserting in the front, what it has to do? It has to create another so small array and just have to link it. That's it. And now front will actually point to this guy. And what you can do? You can simply push the element inside your newly small array. So that's why it is constant time. But this constant time is either from the front or from the back. But if you are inserting or removing the elements, not from the end or beginning in between some element then it is linear because then you have to shift the data let's suppose you are removing maybe there is one data here and you want to remove it now whatever is coming after that you have to shift everything so that's why it becomes linear i mean in case of removal and maybe if you want to insert something in between maybe uh, here you want to insert something and something is already there then what they have to do they have to shift it so that is also a linear job so that's why it is a linear process so enough theory let's go to the practical now so this is your program let me just compile it compile successfully and let's execute this okay fine then see now the beauty of this guy is we have push front push back was already there in vector now we have push front so your initial dq is two three four now if you will push front one then it should be having one here and if you are pushing back five five should come here so that's why it is printing one two three four five okay and printing is this function it is very simple that i'm just iterating over this dq and just printing it and in second case i have the same dq and i'm doing pop front and pop back so this will go off and this will go off so only remaining thing will be three so can you see this so now you might be asking the question that okay where i will use this i mean what is the actual use of dq now let me tell you that if you have this kind of problem like you have to insert to and or to front then you should go for dq because this is a index based sequence container it will be faster and your both the needs are getting filled that you want to insert from beginning and from the end or you want to remove from the beginning and the end so this is the data structure for that okay wow it was good right you you learn something new today correct yeah even when i saw this data structure no i was also very happy so thanks for watching guys and don't forget to hit the like button guys and if you're new to this channel consider subscribing if you want to get the notification for upcoming videos like this okay tada bye bye